Hi, I'm Quentin Schultz, author of the book, An Essential Guide to Public Speaking. An Essential Guide to Public Speaking, subtitled, Serving Your Audience with Faith, Skill, and Virtue. Faith, Skill, and Virtue. Today, I would like to cover chapter 10 on trust. Trust. The title of the chapter is Be Trustworthy. Be trustworthy. So it's a call for those of us who are public speakers, who want to serve our audiences, to be trustworthy. Servant speaking requires trust. Requires trust. Take a look at what I've got down here. The first point is extremely important. When we go to speak, we essentially take up a relationship with the audience. A relationship built on trust. We could say it's a kind of covenant. The audience comes expecting us to be truthful, accurate, honest. They want to trust us. And we approach the audience desiring their trust. We will not take advantage of them but we will stay with their trust in us. That is what servant speaking is all about from the standpoint of trust. It's a relationship. It's like a covenantal two-way promise. It's like a two-way promise that's already there. When you go to hear someone speak, just like when I do, we are assuming that they are going to be trustworthy and we offer trust to them. It's a relationship. When that relationship is broken, we get into trouble. Once they don't trust us, whether we're trying to inform or persuade or delight them makes no difference. They would just as soon get rid of us. When trust is truly broken, the relationship is broken. There's a lot of material in this chapter in the book on the importance of trust and building trust. But for this video, I'd like to focus just on four pretty quickly. The first one is lying. Now that may seem like it's a no-brainer. No-brainer. Do not lie. Do not lie to the audience. But what is a lie? I give the classical definition of a lie as a statement intended to deceive. In other words, lying involves intentional deception in the form of a statement. So if I say something which I believe is true, maybe even I've researched it and think it's true, but it's not true, I have not lied. Not according to the classical definition of lying. This is worthy of discussion. It's worthy of thinking about and talking through. It's an important issue today because many people can't even define what a lie is. So lying, we stay away from it. St. Augustine, the great Christian rhetorician from around the year 400, said, no Christian should ever lie about anything, period, Un end of matter. Easier to say than to live, right? Privacy. Trust also involves protecting people's privacy. I get into this fairly frequently with my speaking because I want to use stories about people that I know, even people in my own family, yet I want to protect their privacy. So I will go to them and say, can I use the story? Is it okay? Or would you prefer that I don't? It's a, it's a sensitive one. I have a great story that I tell about my son when he was around five years old and he really got into a pair of He-Man underpants and had to have those underpants. It was wild. I learned a lot about TV role models in the lives of kids through that example and illustration. But for a number of years, he said to me, Dad, don't use it. He was embarrassed about my using it, and I understood that, and I didn't use it. I protected his privacy. We use precise language. Precise. What does it mean if I say to you, the best approach to public speaking is servant speaking? The best approach. Is it truly the best approach? Is my language precise enough? What about if I say, I believe, based on my experience and my study, that servant speaking is the best approach? 
that if you want to be successful, truly successful as a public speaker, you should aim the best you can to serve that audience, to love the audience as your neighbor. Is that okay? Is it the best, technically speaking? Are there better ones? Words like great and best are, can be difficult. Are they precise? Or we say most people. What do we mean by most people? Or if we say people always. Do people always? Or do they do that? Whatever it is, sometimes. So our language gets us into some trouble as we try to figure out, particularly with adjectives and adverbs, how to use the right kind of precise language. We don't want to breach the trust, but we also want to be able to get at important things and to emphasize particular things and to be able to rank things, the best and the worst. So we have to, the best we can, use precise language. Now that brings me to hyperbole. Hyperbole, it's, it's what's called a figure of speech, a figure of speech. Not literally true, but figuratively true, hyperbole. It was the hottest day ever. Was it really the hottest day? My book is the best book ever written. Hmm. Really? Is that a matter of precise language? Is it hyperbole? Hyperbole is used throughout Scripture, the Old and the New Testament. And, you know, it, it gets at the truth of things by exaggerating. Hyperbole is a figure of speech is exaggerating something for emphasis. So, and we all do it, and as long as the audience understands what we're doing, the meaning of what we're doing as hyperbole, then we're probably continuing to create and maintain trust with the audience. But when we use a figure of speech such as hyperbole in a way that the audience doesn't see it as hyperbole, we can get into trouble because then a simple exaggeration can seem like a lie or it can seem like it's, uh, it lacks precision. Oh, this is a speaker who's not precise. I don't know if I should trust this person or not. So these are four aspects of being trustworthy. But trust has to do with a kind of implicit covenantal relationship between a speaker and an audience. An Im implicit promise. I promise to be truthful to you. If you come and if you listen to me in a way as if I am being true to you, trust me, trust me. Lying, statement intended to deceive. Stay away from lies of all kinds. They get us into trouble. Privacy, protect privacy. Ask for permission as needed. Be precise, particularly in key language that has to do with something like defining our topic or making claims about our topic. And finally, watch hyperbole. Make sure that the audience also sees it as a kind of exaggeration and does not take us literally because hyperbole, as figurative speech, is figurative, not literal speaking. We need audience trust. Servant speaking demands it. So let's be trustworthy. Thank you so much.